I recently came across a very unknown note-taking app called Reflect, but when I looked at it, I became absolutely blown away. I seriously think it can be the best note-taking app ever. So in this video, we'll check out Reflect with its nine benefits, but also four drawbacks that I also discovered. And by then, we'll see if Reflect is the best possible note-taking app for you. When you open up Reflect, you start by today's daily notes. And like Rome, you can edit notes way ahead of time, which is very cool because then you can write things ahead that you want to have in mind during that time. It's also tightly connected to Google Calendar, so you can see your events there too and easily add your notes to these events. This is amazing for meetings because you want to easily write down your thoughts what's been said both during and after the meeting. So if you can sort of connect these two whenever you have these meetings, that'd be the best of the world. And on that is super easy to dump every thought, every link, every interesting finding you come across during that day in that note. Now this is a feature I've never seen before and it blew my mind. When you highlight a book in your Amazon Kindle library, it automatically creates a note with that name, the authors and the highlight, plus the specific page where the highlight was. This is huge, especially if you like to read books on the Kindle. You no longer need to set up complicated systems in order to work, it's just native built in within the app. And you can also search among the existing highlights that have already been made. So it's insanely valuable in my opinion. Like Notion and Evernote, you have also this very cool web clipper that lets you save everything you come across the web. And these show up with a new note later in your library. So in other words, you're never more than one click away from this web clipper ecosystem, whatever. And like Roman Obsidian, you can effortlessly link and create notes while you're writing, which is very good. Using two square brackets. They are very big when it comes to backlinks. You can see all the related notes. Extremely useful if you want to note taking up that works perfectly your brain and works perfectly with your calendar as well. Now speed is something I highly value on this channel and the developer team does it too. This app is one of the fastest note-taking apps I've ever come across, even in part of Obsidian. And whenever you edit something anyway, it shows up immediately across all the devices. And when it comes to search, it's once again very fast there too. You can search within notes without any issues at all. You also have a solid timeline feature where the latest edited note shows up so you can easily switch between those. One of their core values is also security, which definitely shows among their notes. When you first open up Reflect, you prompted to enter a secure password, which they cannot access, by the way. So if you forget it, your notes are gone forever. So if you're looking for both an accessible and secure app, I think Reflect is a very good option for you. In Reflect, you can also go back and see any changes that's been made to a particular note. This is very useful if something happens, you change your mind, if someone wants to go back to see what you've written before, maybe you regretted something that you removed or copy and paste and it ended up not being there, etc. All these kind of hiccups. But now it's just going back and recover them. And lastly, like Notion, you're able to publish your notes as some kind of unofficial web pages. So these were the nine benefits that Reflect has to offer and it's overall looking very good, especially with that daily notes, calendar integration, and Kindle highlights, all that stuff. But I did find four drawbacks though, which we'll talk about next. In terms of formatting, Reflect supports Markdown. This means that if you're familiar with all these syntaxes and a link to a comprehensive guide in the description, by the way, you can make it work on the computer. On the phone, it's a little bit trickier though, so it's not as easy to format. Compared to, for instance, Obsidian, you can see that there are options for bolding, italics, heading, etc. You got this already at hand, but if you're doing this in Reflect, you have to either go and type these kind of special characters, special symbols like on the front. And uh, this is much harder to do on the phone actually if you want to switch between using asterisks and equal signs and whatever. So not as uh, easy actually. And the alternative is not use formatting at all. But as you probably know by now, I'm a very big fan of progressive summarization. So that's not a good strategy either. <laughs> You can create headings, tags, and checkboxes just fine on the phone. So the formatting is sort of both advanced, but also lacks something. So it's pretty much in this in-between state. And I think it's not like it's permanent because it's more in this beta option, I feel. And speaking of the app itself, it's only available on iOS at the moment. 
So like Mem and Apple knows, if you're an Android user, you might want to check out another app instead. Now this is quite a weird one, but as of now, I cannot pin my notes on the phone version. And I absolutely don't know why, especially since there are already pins I cannot do anything about. Maybe that's something that's going to be rolled out or fixed very soon, I don't know. But it works perfectly on the computer, so in, in a way that you have to sort of go back to your computer in order to favorite them. And the reason why I talk a lot about favorites is like for anything, and especially for notes, there is, exists this power law feature, this Pareto's law in which you only look at these tiny, tiny subsets of notes like again and again and again. So if you have like 4,000 notes, you maybe only look at maybe at most like five or eight like every day. And those will of course be the favorites. So you don't want to search for these finals again and again, but just have them readily at hand. Now here is the elephant in the room and the number one drawback according to me. As of now, you have to pay $10 a month in order to use it. And I get it, it's just a fantastic app with its amazing features and I have to make money at some point, but the way of pricing makes it more in the terms of Roam research in case of high-end service that you have to justify. They do have a free trial though, so you can discover for yourself actually by clicking this link below how you feel about it. Overall, I'm extremely impressed by this note-taking app, this reflect and cannot understand whether or not many more people talking about this. Hopefully I inspired you to try it. Maybe you'll check it out for yourself and maybe inspire your friends if you really like it. Especially if you're reading a lot on your phone, tablet or Kindle device, this automatic sync feature would be a game changer. Plus the effortless integration with the calendar, so it's pretty much your second brain on steroids. But if it weren't for the price and the lack of favorites on the phone, I would have used Reflect right now instead of Obsidian. So you have to decide for yourself whether you're willing to pay this $10 a month or stick with the free options instead. But if you are, I'm happy to say that in my opinion, Reflect is the best app for effortless note-taking. It's a very amazing future ahead.